Hi, this is Sunil Bharti and today we have with us once again Katie Stewart, Senior Director of Strategic Programs at Linux Foundation. So let's start with SPDX. Tell us what's, what's new going on in there in the specification. Well, um, the SPDX specification um, at just a month ago released out to 2.2. And what we've been doing with that is adding in a lot more um, features that people have been wanting for their use cases. Uh, more relationships, um, and then we've been working with the Japanese um, automotive people who've been wanting to have a light version. So there's lots of really new technology sitting in the SPDX uh, 2.2 spec, and I think we're at a stage right now where it's good enough that, um, and there's enough people using it, we want to probably take it to take it to ISO. So um, we've been reformatting the document, and we'll be starting to submit it into ISO for it to be so it can become an international specification. And that's happening. Uh, can you talk a bit about if, if there is anything additional that was added to the 2.2 uh, specification? Also, I would like to talk about some of the use cases since you mentioned the automaker. But before that, I just want to uh, talk about anything new in the specification itself. Um, so in the 2.2 specification, um, we've got a lot more relationships. Um, people wanted to be able to handle some of the use cases that have come up from containers now. And so they wanted to be able to start to be able to express that and specify it. We've also been working with the NTIA. Um, basically, they have a uh, software build materials or SBOM working groups. And uh, SPDX is one of the formats that's been adopted. And their framing group has uh, wanted to see certain features so that we can specify known unknowns. So that's been added into the specification as well. And then there are um, how you can actually capture notices uh, since that's something that people want to use. Um, the licenses call for it, and we didn't have a clean way of doing it. And so some of our tool vendors basically asked for this. Um, you know, not their vendors, I guess. their partners. <laughs> there are open source projects that wanted to be able to capture this stuff. And so we need to give them a way to help. Um, we're very much focused right now on making sure that SPDX can be useful in tools and that we can get the automation happening in the whole ecosystem. Um, you know, be it when you build a build a you know binary to ship to someone or to test, you want to have your SBOM. When you download something from the internet, you want to have your soft SBOM. When you ship it out to your customer, you want to be able to be very explicit and clear about what's there because you need to have that level of detail so you can track any vulnerabilities. Because right now about, um, I guess, 19, I think there's a stats from earlier in the year um, from one of the uh, surveys, and I can dig it up for you if you'd like, but I think 99% of all the code that was scanned by Synopsys last year uh, had open source in it, and of, of which it was 70% of the whole bill of materials was open source. Open source is everywhere. And uh, what we need to do is you know, be able to work with it and be able to adhere to the licenses, and transparency on the licenses is important, as is being able to actually know what you have so you can remediate any vulnerabilities. You mentioned a couple of things there. One was you mentioned tooling. So uh, I'm kind of curious, you know, what sort of tooling is there that is already there, whether it's uh, open source or open source based, based commercial solution that work with the SPDX uh, documents? Um, actually, I've got a document that basically lists all of these tools that we've been able to find and more are popping up as the day goes by. Um, we've got um, common tools like uh, some of the Linux Foundation projects are certainly working with it, like Physology, for instance, is able to both consume and generate SPDX. So if you've got an SPDX document and you want to pull it in and cross-check it against your sources to make sure it's matching and no one's tampered with it, uh, the Physology tool can let you do that pretty easily. Um, and codes out there that can generate um, Physology. Free Software Foundation Europe um, has a lint tool um, in their reuse project um, that will basically generate an SPDX document if you're using the IDs. There's, uh, I guess, there's actually a whole bunch more. So I, like I say, I've got a document with a list of about 30, you know, 30 to 40. And obviously the SPDX tools are there. We've got a free online a validator. So if someone gives you an SPDX document, you can paste it into this validator and it'll tell you if it's a valid SPDX document or not. Um, and we're you know looking to it. I'm finding also some tools that are emerging. Um, one of which is Decoder Ring, which we'll be bringing into the Act umbrella soon, um, which is looking at transforming between SPDX and SWID tags, which is another format that's commonly in use. And so we have you know tooling emerging and um, making sure that what we've got with SPDX is usable for by tool 
um, developers and that the, we've got libraries right now for SPDX to help them in Java, Python, and Go. So hopefully we'll see more tools come in and they'll be generating SPX documents and people will be able to share this stuff and make it automatic, which is what we need. Another good tool, I, I, can't, I, can't, I, can't, I can't forget this one, is Turn. <laughs> and actually Turn, and so what Turn does is it's, a, it's another tool that basically will sit there and it will decompose a container and it will let you know a whole, the bill of materials inside that container. So you can do there. And another one that's emerging that we'll hopefully see more soon is something called OSS Review Toolkit that goes into your build flow. And so it goes in when you're actually, you work with it in your system. And then as you're doing builds, you're generating your SBOMs and you're having accurate information recorded, right? As you go, like I said, all of this sort of thing should be in the background. It should not be a manual time intensive effort. When we started this project 10 years ago, it was, <laughs> and we wanted to get it automated. And I think we're finally getting to the stage where it's gonna be, it, there's enough tooling out there and there's enough of an ecosystem building that will get this automation to happen. This is why getting it to ISO and getting the specification to ISO means it'll make it easier for people in procurement to specify that they want to see the input as an SPDX document to complement the product that they're being given so that they can ingest it, manage it and so forth. But by being able to say it's an ISO standard, it makes it the things a lot easier in the procurement departments. Open Chain um, recognized that we needed to do this, and so they went through. Um, and Open Chain is actually the first specification we're taking through to ISO. Um, but uh, for SPDX, we're taking it through uh, as well because once they say you need to follow the process, you also need some form of format, and so it's very logical to make it easy for people to work with this information. And uh, as you work with you know, different players, different of the ecosystem, uh, what are the, some of the pressing needs like automation, you know, improve automation is one of those. What are the, some of the other pressing needs that you think that the, 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 the community has to, to work on? So some of the other pressing needs that we need to be working on um, is more playbooks, more instructions, showing people how they can do things. You know, we figure it out, okay, here's here's how we can model it. Here's how you can represent all these cases. This is all sort of known in certain people's heads, but we have not done a good job of expressing to people so that it's approachable for them and they can do it. One of the things that's kind of exciting right now is the NTIA is having a, um, this working group on these software bill materials. It's come in from the security side, but there's um, various proof of concepts that are going on with it. One of which is uh, healthcare proof of concept. And so there's a group of about five to six um, device manufacturers, medical device manufacturers, that are generating SBOMs in SPDX. And then they are handing them into hospitals to go and be able to make sure they can ingest them in. And this level of bringing people up to this level where they feel like they can do these things, it's been really eye opening to me, how, you know, how much we need to improve our handholding and improve the infrastructure to make it approachable and you know and this this obviously motivates more people to be getting involved from the vendors and the commercial side as well as the open source but it wouldn't have happened i think to a large extent for spdx without this open source and without the projects that have adopted it already now just from the educational or awareness point of view like if there's an open source project you know how can they easily create you know sbomb documents that uses the spds you know specification with their releases and keep it synced that's exactly what we love to see We'd love to see the open source upstream projects basically generate SPX documents as they're going forward. Um, so the first step is to um, use the SPDX license identifiers and make sure you've got a clean license. You, you, have, you understand what the licensing should be in each file. And ideally you can document with the tags. But then there's three or four tools out there that actually scan them and will generate an SPDX document for you. Um, if you're working at the command line, um, the reuse lint tool that I was mentioning from Free Software Foundation Europe will work very fast and quickly with what you've got. And it'll also help you make sure you've got all your files tagged properly. Um, if you've got a little bit, you know, you haven't done all the tagging exercise and you want to know what, what you've got, a scan code works at the command line and will give you that information as well. And then if you want to start working in a larger system and you want to store results and looking things over time, and have some state behind it all. So like, you know, it'd be different versions of things over time. Um, Physology will remember, you know, from one version to another and will help you 
um, create these SS offer build materials. Can you talk about you know some of the new use cases that you're seeing now, which maybe you did not expect earlier, which also shows how the whole community is actually growing? Oh, yeah, well, when we started the project 10 years ago, we didn't understand containers. They weren't even on the right mindset of people. And there's a lot of information sitting in containers. Um, we've had some really good talks over the last couple of years that illustrate the problems. There was a report that was put out from the Linux Foundation by Armine Hemmel um, that goes into the details of what's going on in containers and some of the concerns. So being able to get on top of automating what's going on with concern inside a container and what you're shipping and knowing you're not shipping more than you need to, uh, figuring out how we can improve these sorts of things is certainly an area that was not initially thought about. Um, we've also seen a tremendous interest in what's going on in IoT space. And so that you need to really understand what's going on in your devices uh, when they're being deployed in the field and to know whether or not, you know, effectively is vulnerability going to break it or can you recover, things like that. Uh, there's, you know, we've seen tremendous, in the last, you know, the last 10 years, we've seen a tremendous spectrum of things we just didn't anticipate. And the nice thing about SPDX is, you know, you've got a use case that we're not able to represent. If we can't tell you how to do it, just open an issue and we'll start trying to figure it out and start to figure if we need to add fields in for you or things like that. Kate, thank you so much for taking your time out and talking to me today about these projects.